Hello, this is Mark Abili with The Art of Diesel. We are all about diesel and automotive efficiency, performance, and independence. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the struggles I had, which was fitting the intercooler into my E320 CDI. This is also known as Ivana, the turbo diesel. So, one of the things I decided to do with my modifications was put a larger intercooler uh, behind the bumper cover on my car and I chose to go with the Mishimoto J-Line intercooler. This intercooler is significantly larger than the stock one but I managed to fit it and let me show you how. I'm going to show you that my first attempt really didn't work so well but in the long term I did find a way to make it work and I'm quite happy with this intercooler. I'll share a fair amount of detail here. So anyhow, let's, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first step I took was to measure the distance between the bolts on the top of the intercooler, measured those out on the bumper, drilled them, shot some bolts through them, and I grabbed these hardware store brackets that I had drilled out to a larger size with appropriately placed holes, stuck the brackets on there, checked the distance, also lined up the intercooler to see that it would actually work. Next, I wanted to make certain I had things properly aligned, so I actually cut down a bolt and sharpened the point in order to have something that I could drop into the holes on the top of the intercooler. Using the brackets, the hardware store brackets that had been carefully marked, I just tapped them lightly with a hammer and made little marks. And with those marks, I knew exactly where to drill my holes. I start off with just a small drill to get everything centered. Then I moved on to a step drill. It's a real convenient and uh, accurate way to get the holes where we want them. And here I'm dropping one of the intercooler bolts through the hole to make sure it works. Then I cut down the brackets and I spent some time on the grinder just taking off sharp edges and such so that I wouldn't slice myself. After that, I buffed them down and cleaned them up with uh, mineral spirits and then I was able to shoot them with some of the same paint I was using on the engine. These hardware store brackets are zinc plated but this helps because of rust. Here I'm actually hanging the intercooler for the first time just pushing the bolts through there tightening them down. And here you get a feel for how the intercooler actually was hanging from the bumper initially. This didn't really work. I'll tell you why in a moment. I did have to tighten the bolts on the intercooler last. That makes sure that those blue brackets get properly aligned. Then I measured for hoses. The intercooler inlet and outlet are two and a half inches diameter and the stock hoses I was going to clamp to are three inches in diameter. So I went on Amazon and hunted around. I found a pair of these, the transition from three to two and a half. And then I grab T-bolt brackets or T-bolt clamps in two different sizes. You have to account for the thickness of the hoses. When the hoses came in, clean them up good. I had to carefully decrease the metal portion of the OEM hoses in order to make certain that when I clamped the new hoses on that they weren't going to slip off. Then I was able to fit them and I put the T-bolt clamps on in a way that the bolts would hang downwards on the inside. This makes it easier to reach from underneath the car. And as you can see here, they don't interfere with anything. Once I had everything cinched up tight, here I'm using a 10 millimeter deep socket to get those T-bolts nice and tight. And then after that, I get a light and I check to make sure that I'm not pinching the OEM hose and that it's not going to rub on anything. Then I do the same on the other side. Again, I put the T-bolts in so they'd hang down toward the inside and cinched them down good. What I'm not showing here is that I also inspected those hoses the hose on the right side to make sure it wouldn't clamp or rub on anything. This is the initial intercooler installation, but here's why I had problems with it. When I put the, oh, the original bumper cover on here, you can see that it actually pushes out. You can see it bulging right at the corners of the intercooler. And because this, this one was still the original baked, cracked 
bumper cover. It actually opened up the crack. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this upwards. Ideally, I'd move it back a little bit too, but there's actually a problem with that, which is you can't really move it back too far. You should be able to see it back here. This is the accumulator and filter for the air conditioning system. I put some pads on there in case things bumped up against. You can see there's a little gap uh, in case the intercooler were to rattle around a little bit. I didn't want metal on metal. But the bottom line is that this thing is in the way. You can't really move the intercooler back. But what I can do is move it upwards. So what I've done is I took and I measured. This intercooler is pretty close to the back. It's held by clamps and these bolts. And there are uh, top mounts on the intercooler itself that we're bolting to with these L clamps that, that come down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify those clamps and pull the intercooler up, but the bumper's in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this aluminum bumper. So I've measured up an inch and a half from the top of the intercooler all the way across. And at the edges, I just measured and, and made a line that's pretty close to the same angle as the intercooler with the straight edge. And I'm going to cut this out. And that's gonna allow me to move the intercooler up, I'll modify the brackets, and we'll pull it up. All right, well, you might expect that this is just a big hollow piece of aluminum. Two things are going on here. It's not completely hollow. There is a wall that runs across here, but there's also a doubler back here that's been added and is bolted on in places like you can see this, this bolt right over here. Um, this has been, so there is actually a bit more structure here that I'm not completely removing all of the structure of this bumper by cutting out the bottom end of it. Thank <laughs> you. 
After all of this work, the intercooler was now tucked up into a nice, neat position, and I can tell you that I went back and checked the intercooler hoses again to make certain that the movement wasn't going to cause them to rub up against anything or kink anywhere, and that's still the case. There was enough play in the stock intercooler hoses that this configuration still worked quite well. When I put the new bumper cover on you can see here that it actually fit quite well and the intercooler relocation was a success if I check up underneath there is some space between the intercooler and the front bumper cover now so this was a success and um, thanks for watching